Hi guys, I'm Paul from Urban Constrictors. So we're still on lockdown. So what I've decided to do is do a video similar to last week's. I'm going to show you some proven female breeders and also some females that are going to uh, lay eggs for the very first time this year. I'm going to show you ones that are uh, about 10 or 15 days off laying as well as ones that haven't quite overlaid. So the aim of this video is to show you just how some of the uh, really big females have aged, including my orange dream clown, my superfly clown, my banana heck clown. I always got to show the banana heck clown because she's just very dear to me and she weighs a whopping four kilos. She's actually over four kilos, she's about 4.2. So we're gonna take a look at them. I'm gonna show you a couple of males as well. I might even bounce to hatchlings and show you some of them. And I'm also gonna tell you about a little change I've recently made on my login uh, clutches. I've changed the way I've done it. I've been meaning to do it for quite some time, but with this lockdown, it gives me a little bit of time to focus and to redo the way I, I log my clutches. So I'm gonna show you that just in case it's useful to anyone. And yeah, so we'll get started. Uh, I know the video last week was crazy long. It was almost 40 minutes long. This one won't be. I hear you say, thank God. Uh, so. I'll try and keep it 20 minutes or slightly under. I think the 20, 15 to 20 minute mark's the magic number for my videos. So uh, we'll take a closer look at these now. Hope you like the video. And I did talk about uh, last last video, I talked about having a clutch to cut. Unfortunately, none have pipped, so I'm gonna let them pip and I'll show you them on the very next video. But uh, there could be some really, really amazing uh, hatchlings in that. Uh, so, you know, you definitely wanna watch next week's video. Uh, and yeah, so we'll get started. So because I talked about the banana head clown and she's so close to me, I'll grab her first. Uh, I'll try and get the angle a bit better because I know, oh damn, she's deep in shed. Um, she's actually entered her pre-lay shed. So once she sheds, this will be the final time she sheds and then she'll lay. And then obviously she's shed, shed after it. What I meant to say is this is the final time she will shed uh, before laying her clutch of eggs. Um, I don't think I've palpated her, no I haven't. Uh, I ultrasounded her and I saw uh, some eggs, I didn't count them. But I'm hoping for double digits or close to with her being four kilos. So she's a just a visual banana, 100% head clown, female and uh, very little spots. She's got the black spots but she hasn't got too many. Um, I'm kind of a little bit gutted I've shown her because she's just spectacular and as you can see by the opaque eyes, she's deep in shed. So it's kind of almost a waste showing you. With her being so close to laying, I'll pop her back and let her get back to kind of nesting. And then I'll get the Superfly Clown who is just filling out nicely, but she's, she's quite a boisterous female. You can see there, she just juddered just because I got a hold of her. So she's a beautiful uh, lemon colour. Uh, this isn't my line of pastel because I know someone will ask. This is just a female I bought from Justin Kabelka. A really beautiful female. So for those of you who don't know what her genetics are, she's a super pastel fire clown. She made them crazy five, six gene clown combos um, I recently showed off. So she's the mother of them. Really nice girl, but she she's quite nippy at times, so I'm not gonna let her too close to my face. But for a three and a half kilo female, she's aged really well. So when people say uh, pastel, dull, uh, clown combos out, uh, I'd have to disagree in many cases. And just to prove it further, I'll show my pastel head clown that I hatched in 2013. I know a lot of you have already seen her, but it's just another reference to saying pastel Browns clowns out, but let me tell you this, and we'll use this as as a, as a reference. Mark my words, pastel in clown is either going to take off this year or next year because I know of some combinations that are coming out with pastel in. I'm doing some of them, so I'll talk about them then. But you mark my words. Um, if you don't have pastel in clown yet, uh, you probably will be very soon. Not everybody will be because we don't all like the same things. Um, but the majority of you who don't will add pastel to your clown combos. I don't care what you say. You might say, no, I won't, no, I won't. But trust me, um, and I'll tell you 
a gene that's amongst the pastel is cypress. So when pastel and cypress are mixed into clown, cypress brings the best of pastel out, brings them deep blacks and them canary yellows. So um, I'm definitely getting cypress and pastel to turn up in clown this season, uh, hopefully using uh, this girl as well as others. So here's my absolutely stunning, stunningly beautiful seven year old uh, pastel clown. She, when I hatched her and her sisters, well, and brothers for that matter, it was just a landmark year for me, uh, 2013. Uh, Garrick DeMeyer, and I know I've shouted him out on a couple of videos, but I have so much to thank him for. Uh, he really inspired me very early on. And I remember watching his, uh, the video he did with pastel clowns. And I didn't, I don't think I even kept ball pythons then. And I saw them and I just thought, I have to buy into these snakes. Because it was quite expensive in, in 2011 when I was watching uh, the videos. And I thought, I have to buy into these snakes just to create a pastel clown. And that's probably why I ended up with so much pastel in my clown combos. Because uh, Garrick's videos just lit my fire. So maybe, maybe if it wasn't for him, I don't know, maybe Evan Constrictors would never have been born. So I know Garrick to my will watch my videos, but one day I'll no doubt see him face to face and get to thank him. But just like so many people say to me, you've inspired me, you've got me into these snakes. You kind of almost don't think it's real. So if I do get the opportunity to thank him one day, I don't know if it'll really sink in just how much I do appreciate it. But yeah, you can see she's golden. She's a little bit brown on the top but she's a golden colour. She's beautiful, absolutely stunning. So um, I thought I'd just give you a quick look at her. So moving away from pastel, we're gonna take a look at the orange dream clown. Now you may think as soon as you see her, wow, she's so much smaller. You've got to remember there's some big girls, so she is over two kilos, but now she looks like a bootlace because them girls are so large. Um, and this is kind of, so th this is going back to the way I'm collecting my data for the eggs. Um, I'll talk about that a little bit more soon, but this is one of the reasons, because Urban Constrictors is almost full now. I've got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 spots, but I've got nine snakes moving up next week. So I've got 14 spots available, what's gonna turn into six. Uh, when I start selling females, I want my customers to get the best information uh, from me moving forwards. So they know what my snakes laid, when they laid, when they had years off, who they was paired to last and before that. So they can move forward. Sorry, sorry, next door actually doing a bit of building work and now it sounds like he's trying to break in here. So I hope that's not too off-putting. But um, so I'm giving them as much information as I can. So when they move forward with the snakes they bought from me, they have all the information they need. So if they get uh, retained sperm from the season before, they'll understand that nine times out of 10, it's gonna be a clown combo from me. So, um, so yeah, so that's why I've changed the way I'm doing my data. So if a lot of you aren't that familiar with Orange Dream and Clown, it's kind of a very, very subtle look, but this female, if you can if you can kind of home in on her head, she has a very beautiful head pattern. She's got amazing pattern. She was very orange as a, as I nearly said, as a child, <laughs> as, a, as a young snake. She's not as orange now, and she's nowhere near as pretty as she once was, but none of them ever are. Um, but yeah, she's just absolutely stunning. And she's had her pre lay shed. So the next, uh, the next, couple of weeks we're going to see some eggs from her and she was bred to two very very powerful het males. Het clown I mean. <laughs> right so there, whew, gosh it gets hot quick. I'm going to just show, do you know what, I'm just going to show you, um, not the first clown I ever bought but the second because she's down there four kilos and I do not power feed my snakes whatsoever. I'm not against it. I'm not one of these who, who says you shouldn't feed these snakes as much as they want. If you want to feed them, feed them. If they want it, they'll eat it. If they don't, they probably won't. So 
this is a big girl, she gets fed about every 10, nine or 10 days. Excuse me, really beautiful crown. Now, a guy, a guy called Ryan, very, very long time ago. Uh, she's a 2012, so maybe in about 2013, maybe 2014. He put her up for sale on RF UK. She was a lot of money. She was quite a lot more than all the other, well, when I say all the other clowns, the one or two other clowns that was online. And I bought her straight away. I didn't ask for a penny discount simply because quality breeds quality. And this outstanding female with a full dorsal stripe all the way down and her beautiful colors makes fantastic babies. So when you're picking your clowns, uh, just try and, because there's an abundance of them now, just try and pick them wisely and, and, and try and don't just think it's a clown. So you're adding it to the collection. You want to uh, get the best possible clown you can, whether that's off me or somebody else. Um, I hatch B grade, C grade clowns just like everybody else. And I hatch the A grade ones. So it's like uh, Ben Ogden, for instance, bought a beautiful uh, blade clown off me. When he got it, it, I advertised it as a clown. When he got it, he said, surely this has got another gene. I said, yeah, it's got blade. It was like, damn, I didn't even know. Thank you, thank you very much. And it left me a glowing review because I didn't ask him for any more money. I was just, I was happy with the, I think it was 275 pound. It was pennies for a female clown, but, and he was happy. So good customers are, are good to move forward with. Um, and Ben's bought quite a few. He bought some high end stuff off me as well. So just really quality clown. So when you're picking your clowns, I'll show you another uh, uh, female clown. Uh, this one isn't anywhere near four kilos, it's simply because she's quite a picky feeder. But when you're picking, when you're picking clowns up, you know, uh, you want to pick quality. So this is potentially a blade clown, as you can see, she's super reduced. Now, I know a lot of us are moving towards the busy clowns, but I'm keeping both open, just like... I wouldn't rule past a lot of clown like I was talking about earlier, like some people are. Uh, well, they're not necessarily ruling it out, but they're just, they're, they're trying to avoid it, let's say. But this female, one, she starts giving me eggs. She's going to make some outstanding uh, babies. Now, there wasn't blade in the pairing, so there's a strong chance this is just a genetically reduced clown. It could be a blade clown. It could be something new, probably not. Uh, but just a really, really fantastic example. And this is what I'm passionate about. Um, on my kind of Instagram and Facebook pictures, it's not, you know, my high end ones, clown pie, uh, superfly, uh, clown, superfly, leopard clown, blah, blah, blah. It's just the quality ones. Like I put a picture up of just a straight lesser and she, because she's absolutely stunning, just stunning. And somebody's actually put a deposit down on her for after she's laid eggs, after she's got back to work, they're going to take her because I need the space. And I'm all about just the passion and don't matter if you it, you could just have the best looking normal and i'll be excited by that so it's for, for me it's not a competition it's just a fantastic hobby that i've turned into my business my full-time business and just beautiful snakes like this i just look at and i just really appreciate so Then. So here's a good example of one copy of Pastel in Clown. So still very, very yellow, very beautiful, uh, really beautiful. So this is a uh, Firefly Spot Nose Clown. So a Pastel Fire Spot Nose Clown. I initially sexed it as a female because I knew I was keeping it, so I half heartedly uh, sexed it. So on my very first, oh, it's got a little bit of stuck shell on its neck. Um, on my very first post on Instagram, when I shared this beautiful snake, I think I, I think I think I wrote a uh, female. But uh, weeks later, I, I always triple check everything, and I've, I sexed it as a male, and I thought, oh, thank God for that, because I wanted a a, a, a pastel uh, spot nose clown something to take over his dad. Um, his dad I've still got, and he's is is basically up for sale. He's a pastel spot nose clown. And he's a phenomenal breeder. He would lock with your arm if you give him a chance. He's he's a stud. But um, I needed fire uh, in the mix because this boy has bred my orange dream disco inferno yellow belly. And I know what you're thinking. Oh my gosh, you're gonna potentially hatch some pure white snakes and not know if there's orange dream spot nose and yellow belly in the mix and disco. Um, because I could make a well, no, if it was white, it wouldn't have disco because 
uh, Disco Inferno acts like super. But you know what I meant. Um, but the thing is, they're going to be 100% head clown. So moving forward, uh, they'll hatch all fires, uh, fire, uh, fires and fire clowns uh, minimum. So I'll, I'll, ha I'll hopefully hatch a pure white female moving forward because even just a stray super fire head clown female would be worth her weight in gold moving forward. But for for the times I miss the pure white snake, I'll hopefully hit the Disco Infernos, Orange Dream Disco Inferno, Orange Dream Yellow Belly Disco Infernos, blah, 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 blah. Heck clown. So it's spot nose, I miss spot nose out. So just another really, really cool, visually beautiful uh, hatchlings that are 100% head for clown. Now, who doesn't get kind of excited about that? So, I'll move away from them lot and just, oh, show you the mahogany yellow belly tide. So, she's growing up, she's growing slowly. I find that some tides do grow a little bit slower. And the amount of times I've shared pictures of her and brought mahogany pied and got like loads of likes and comments, and I thought, nah, God, she's mahogany yellow belly pied. How I forget yellow belly, I'll never know. She, as you can see, she's dull a little bit because she's actually entering shed. But just a beautiful, uh, beautiful female. Really excited to be working with Mahogany. And when she's ready, if I've hit a uh, clown pied male combo, which I certainly should have, when she's ready, she'll probably see uh, clown pied to make some uh, pied combos, 100% head clown, but with Mahogany involved. So really excited to be working with this girl. So what else? So I think I'm going to move away, you've seen them, so move away from there, pretty much seen that, let me see if she shared, uh, yes she has shared, I'll just show her off just because I absolutely love this girl, she's got a little chunk of rectitude chip on her head but we'll leave it there because it looks like she's got like a little hat on, but thanks to Neil Martin for letting me take this girl, now I recently bought uh, a couple of snakes off Neil Martin because I think he's only half in, half out in the hobby. I think he's slowly starting to leave the hobby for whatever reason. And while I was there having a good talk with him, because he's a really nice guy, uh, he showed me some of his snakes and he said, do you want out else? And I said, is this girl for sale? He said, yeah, did me a good price. I think a fair price. And I walked away with this Hypo Mojave, 66% possible hat cat clown. Now, because my, my Mojave, not my Mojave, because my, I've got a Mojave clown, but, because my hypo clown is seeing her, if she doesn't prove out, I'll hit this combination. That's 100% heck clown anyway. So I can't really lose, but I'm praying she does prove out. Now, because she's got this beautiful, strong, vibrant color, I, hope, I really hope it's showing up just how incredible this female is. Very gray with golds and lots of like greens and different colors in her. I really hope you can kind of see it. I think she will prove out, I really do. Uh, she's just so, she's either just an absolute spectacular version of herself, or she is het, and het clown quite often turns the colour up a little bit, kind of turns the hue saturation right up, and brings all them colours. And that's why I think one of my GHI POS het clowns will prove out, and one of them won't, because there is a visual difference in the pair. So yeah, so thanks again to Neil, uh, shout out to Neil, and wish me luck on proving this girl out. Uh, I think it's gonna be fantastic. It says on, uh, it says on top, hypo clown only. Uh, Cause I was, I was thinking, shall I put the chocolate clown pos hat hypo in? I thought no. So yeah, feeling volleyballs, didn't count them cause I was too busy yapping. But feeling very cool, so she's feeling fantastic, feeling good. So to jump back onto pies, just because there's a pie right here. I don't know if I've shown this girl off. So in 2016, you can see she's still quite small. She's never bred for me. She's got a little bit of poop on her. So beautiful NG pinstripe, and I've kept her brother as well. What's her pastel NG pinstripe pied? So just a beautiful NG pinstripe pied. Um, not the most groundbreaking. I'm still yet to get Orange Dream in pie, but hopefully I'll hit Orange Dream clown pie. So I'm kind of leap, leap frog, frog, leap frogging it a bit. Or did she just flinch? Um, nearly, nearly died then. See, uh, it's, it's risky this YouTube lark. 
but um just a really pretty girl and you know hopefully she'll she'll clutch uh, she'll um lay a clutch of eggs for me uh, she's looking good but uh I, i'm still dying to get orange dream into hides uh, I should have been one of the first, if not the first, I did it quite early on, but I had a disaster with the eggs. But it was all a learning curve, so I'll show this girl because she's just spectacular. So, I hope this is showing up against the black. Um, shout out to TA Exotics. I give him another shout out as well. If you're watching this, Adam, give me a shout out on the last video, I haven't even acknowledged it. Even in the comments, it says follow. Hello Adam from K Exotics. So jump on that one and give me some love. Um, no, Adam's a sound guy. This female is the best coloured snake I own, in my opinion. So shout out to Roldan at iRes. Now, I wish I kept the picture of her as a hatchling. You wouldn't have believed it was the same snake. Just wash all this colour out. She was just like a squint your eyes, relatively white and orangey looking snake. Just a very pale snake but I needed cypress, I needed cypress. And it was the only one within reach for distance because Roland's in the Netherlands, I'm in the UK and all the rest of the cypress stuff was in the States. And I think she was 2000 quid and I said, I'll her, picked her up from Ham and I was blown away by her color. And even Roland's, I think it's his wife, but it might be just a, a, a female friend of his said, yeah, Roland, and Roland had told me this himself. Uh, she nearly hit the uh, whole back rack many times over. But the colour of this snake is just spectacular. I hope it's showing up. So we've got all these beautiful lavender colours, this really rich, deep orange uh, dorsal stripe, and then these much lighter sort of banana uh, colour, banana snake, not the fruit, banana uh, colour uh, sides, just absolutely spectacular. Um, this for me, I could have that all day long, just look at a snake like that. That, that to me is almost like the end. It's like, well, how do you better this? I don't know, maybe you guys do, but uh, the males, the male that's going to go to her should hopefully just take it to another level. But I'd be super happy, and obviously he's a clown, but I'd be super happy just to hatch this 100% pet clown. Because I don't know how this will react with clown once it's vis visual. Because I hope clown doesn't dominate so much and just take all this orange away. But if we can make a clown that orange, I know Justin Cabell cries, but no one else does. If we can make a clown that orange and purple, I'd, I'd be very happy. So, much else. So, pastel pies, you know, uh, orange dream, calico, fire, uh, banana wrenchy, but she is currently locked. So, just looking through. Reading them all. Uh, so I don't always just like pastel leopard, uh, but she's actually a lot. Yeah, so many of them are locked. So I'll go to the hatchling and see if there's anything else I want to show you real quick, and then we'll wrap the video. Pastel GHI clown. So I'll do a little down this because this is about to leave me. Um, very, very soon. So beautiful uh, pastel GHI clown. I don't think there's any other genes. Um, expected GHI to kind of be a little bit more dominant, but the pastel clown, when mixed with GHI, really takes the kind of forefront, takes over. But you can see the GHI influences, really deep black spots, uh, GHI borders, really nice. But Justin's just put, put pictures out of the GHI I think it was Red Stripe, uh, GHI Pompey or something. And he's like, wow, I'm loving how GHI and Red Stripe react. So, I, although I could make G, I could potentially make GHI Red Stripe clowns this year, I'm not, because I've got my, my, um, I've got my kind of stall set out. So I'm gonna stick with my plan and then go for that probably next year, because it, it's just amazing stuff. But I'm obviously part of the GHI clown, uh, project because I just love how it reacts but it could react a bit better and I think it will with deeper darker snakes so I think that might be it the Wookie which is question mark Wookie but not uh, hurricanes yeah I think oh she's beautiful but she's in churn 
Firefly, the yellow belly, and Chronos. Alright. So now you saw that last week. Oh, June Leopard play a yellow belly. Orange June Leopard. Oh, that's it, that's wrong. Yeah, so that's all I'm going to show you for today, I think. Um, I'll, show, I'll show you this one. I'll wrap it up with this one. Don't think she's. No. Oh, she's in the shell. Oh, bugger. So, for all you people that hate spider combos, she's deep in shed, so that'll give her even more reason to wobble. But this female is just stunning. So I think banana females are valuable, no matter what the genes are involved. Uh, so banana spider, female, beautiful, fantastic condition, deep in shed, no head wobble whatsoever. Um, but she's just stunning, and she has these crazy high white sides. You'd think there was calico or sugar in there, but there isn't. But I'll leave her alone because she's uh, deep in shed. I need to wet that down a little bit to make sure she has a good, perfect shed. So I hope you've liked this video, guys. I, I know it was a bit wishy-washy, but I just wanted to kind of chilled out, relaxed approach to a video. Not all about kind of business, like hit it. Oh, do you know, I just want to show you. Oh, she's with her, she's with her boyfriend. So, yeah, so. I'll leave it there. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't, give it two thumbs down. Subscribe if you haven't. Next week, there will be a cutting video, unless I've got my dates wrong. I just remember what I was going to show you. So. No pippage. So. I don't know why I just turned light off and walk back in there in a second. So this is how I'm doing clutch cards now. If you follow me and you've followed me for a while, you'll know that I used to use Dynamo labels and write uh, the clutch, the pair and blah, blah, blah. I've always felt it was a bit kind of rubbish, uh, a bit kind of low key. So yesterday I designed these, uh, took a little bit of inspiration from Justin's clutch cards and uh, others that I've seen, I think DNS Pythons do one. Um, so I I'm going to do these, and everyone who buys a proven feeder, uh, proven feeder, proven breeder female off me, not a male, because it doesn't matter what uh, females and males seem, it makes no difference. But any proven breeder females that leaves me and goes into other people's collections, you'll get these, and I'm going to try and backdate them a little bit. So if you can see this, I'll just check. Yeah, so, God, it's 28 minutes. I can talk. So, just them constrictors. That's uh, mainly for the buyers. So, remember. So, the season 2020, uh, clutch one, pastel high clown. And the only reason I've done this, I kind of messed up a little bit, but I think there's good reason in this instance. So, that wouldn't be there because I didn't actually pair her in 2020 to this male. I only paired her to the chocolate clown, pos hypo. She had two locks with him and she had several locks. I've just put a question mark, so I just need to fill it in uh, when I find that information out. Date lay and date June. This clutch was laid about 55 or 56 days ago. So I'm gonna fill this in uh, due day. I'm gonna fill that in on the day and work backwards. I'll just ask Siri um, what date it was 58 days ago. So what the idea is moving forward is the female, the dam, Pass like clown in this case. Sires, if there's more than one, I never really do three, but I've just put a third one just in case. But then last season's sire, this is for retained sperm. So this, so when she sees a different male next year, this will be down there like it is anyway. But, it, it, oh, sorry, no, the chocolate clown will be down there because I'm hoping the chocolate clown did it. And then next year, when I fill it out, if I hit a chocolate clown, I just looked down there and realized why. Uh, I think this can be quite valuable. So like when I'm mixing Dream Sickle into Orange Dream, if say somebody puts, let's say, Super Pastel to that Orange Dream and he hatches nothing but straight Orange Dreams and Normals and he's thinking, what's going on? Or it must have been retained sperm from last year. He'll see that she was paired to a Dream Sickle. So he'll be obviously doing cartwheels around his living room. So this is how I'm doing my clutch cards now, knocking on back. And I'm making a change to the ID cards. All the ID cards on the females are coming off. I'm getting little plastic sleeves um, delivered today from Amazon. And I'm doing new ID cards with a little bit more information. 
and I'm going to start jotting down exactly when every female lays. I always have, but I've never used it as reference. So if a female lays in September, uh, I think, right, well, round about September, she's going to lay next year. But now I'm going to look at exactly the date, 21st of September. Right, well, that's when we need to aim for to get her to lay. And then if she lays way before or after, I'll take that information, obviously, moving forward and adjust it for next year. So I think it'll just make me a better breeder in the long run. run. And because this is my full-time job, I need to be as good as I possibly can, really. So I think this is valuable. So I hope someone may find this useful. When you're doing your uh, clutches, I would always now recommend uh, doing last year's sire as well, just for retained sperm. Although it's quite rare, it does happen. So I think it'll just make uh, better moving forward so i hope you've enjoyed this video guys smash that like button leave me a comment uh, in the comments box and i'll see you next week for a cutting video cheers